Something that's always fascinated me about the Edmonton Oilers is the front office fascination with Cody Ceci. We've all seen how much he struggles at five on five. We all have seen a lot of the metrics surrounding him. And a lot of us, if you're not into the advanced metrics, that's a okay. I am going to be providing other metrics as well. Actual goals, actual goals against that sort of thing. But I am very curious as to why the Oilers just seem so allergic to moving on or trading Cody Ceci, especially at that cap hit and the flexibility would give the team if they decided to move on from him and in today's video I wanted to talk about that talk about why I think the Oilers should have moved on from CC a little bit you know a while ago not just this summer and I try and figure out a reason as to why the team just hangs on to him apart from just being a good locker room guy I know not every team wants to be like the Vegas Golden Knights where they are ruthless. They don't care about the locker room dynamic. It is about winning. And if you're not part of that winning team, they will ship you out as quickly as humanly possible. With Cody Ceci, it seems like he's the type of guy where uh, whether it's leadership like McDavid and Dreisaitl and uh, Nurse that want him around, whether it's the front office that just really likes him as an individual and they like him in that locker room, or whether the team actually just truly values him a lot more than a lot of the fans, and especially me. I think Cody Ceci has some value. I think where they've played him over the years uh, did not maximize that value, especially on that second pair with Darnell Nurse. Uh, they played him with Nurse far too much, far too long, and it took way too long to split them up, especially in the postseason this past year where Edmonton, of course, made it to the Stanley Cup Finals of Game 7. But in today's video, I'm going to talk a little bit about Cody Ceci, kind of talk about why I think the team has kept him, why I think they should move on from him, and why they should be trading him like right now, especially with the offer sheet scenario. They definitely need to make a decision regarding a guy like Cody Ceci if they want to keep Broberg or Dylan Holloway. I am leaning towards Broberg probably not staying. However, I do think the Oilers are probably going to match Dylan Holloway, but we're going to see about that. So without further ado, let's jump into this. If you end up liking today's video, make sure you hit like. If you end up really liking it, make sure you hit subscribe. We are very close to 3,700 subscribers. The season is right around the corner. I'm very excited. Let's jump into it. So uh, the Cody CC conundrum, as always, this is kind of what I uh, have been talking about since the video started. Um, so per natural stat trick, I have his stats at five on five since 2021, 22 playoffs to today and the regular season, 2021, 22 regular season to today. Now for the playoffs, it was minimum 100 minutes played out of nine defensemen. And then in the regular season, a minimum of 500 minutes played on the ice out of nine defensemen that have played for M10 at that threshold. So in the playoffs out of nine defensemen, for the last three playoffs, Cody CC ranks eighth in expected goals for percentage, seventh in goals for percentage, eighth in Corsi for percentage, ninth in shots for percentage, ninth in scoring chances for percentage, eighth in high danger Corsi for percentage, and eighth in high danger goals against. So uh, in the playoffs, Cody CC is by far pretty much the worst defenseman the Oilers have in terms of all the metrics, the advanced metrics and just normal metrics. If we're looking at just goals against, um, yeah, he ranks eighth in goals against. And then high danger uh, chances for as well, eighth against in that category out of 100 minutes out of nine D-men. Cody CC just does not pull his weight in the playoffs. He has his moments. We all have seen Cody CC. Game seven, Cody CC is a force to be reckoned with. He scored uh, a goal against Vancouver in game seven. And then, of course, he had that beautiful breakout pass to Yanmark in game seven against the Florida Panthers. Yanmark went in on a breakaway, tied the game at one. The Oilers, unfortunately, obviously lost game seven against the Florida Panthers in the cup final. But looking at the regular season now as well pretty similar stats he is what he is there isn't a lot of change in terms of his playoff performance to his regular season performance which makes things even more confusing as to why the team continues to hold on to him when he clearly is one of the lower tiered players on the team in terms of his defensive ability in the regular season since 21-22, 8th in Corsi 4 percentage, 8th in shots 4 percentage, 8th in goals 4 percentage, 7th in expected goals 4 percentage, 8th in scoring chances 4 percentage, 8th in high danger chances 4, and ninth in high danger goals against. He ranks dead last in the high danger goals against range. Of course, there are other things to take into consideration. The goaltending, we've seen the Oilers goaltending up and down, uh, as Ken Holland would say, up and down like a toilet seat. 
We, we understand that there's a lot more that goes on on the ice than just one individual player. But when you have one player whose impacts are this similar to each other in the playoffs and the regular season, and you have three years of data to look at, I think when you look at all this in front of you, you've got to go, okay, well, maybe this is on the player. Maybe this isn't just the system. This can't just be his teammates. This can't just be, you know, he just happens to jump on the ice during a play where, you know, maybe there's a bad line change and he has to rush back. No, I, I like this is a pattern here with Cody. CC and this has been his pattern since he got here. He is not a great defenseman. Uh, if you look at these stats, he, he's not even a number six defenseman at this point in his career. He's probably a number seven guy who gets into the lineup if there's an injury. But the Oilers seem to play him like he's a number four D man, and I've I've never really understood this. And I've beaten this horse to death a lot. But because of the offer sheet scenario and this current salary cap scenario, I wanted to just really hammer home why Cody CC on this team right now is actually hindering things. Of course, we can talk about the Darnell Nurse contract. I understand that. But for right now, in terms of roster maximizing the roster that you have, maximizing the value that you have, continuing to employ Cody CC is not the way to go. Uh, finding a trade as soon as possible, especially before the season starts, free up some cap space and sign Dylan Holloway or Philip Broberg if that's the direction they want to go. I'm not sure if they're going to want Philip Broberg at that price point, uh, but if they did do that, at least in one year from now, so middle of August next year, they could trade him if things don't work out. And I honestly think I would rather Philip Broberg at least at minimum on the third pair over Cody CC in the lineup right now. It's unfortunate because obviously I like Cody CC. A lot of fans like Cody CC. The team seems to value him a lot. Um, the players love him. But in terms of his impact on the ice, it is incredibly negative. And I don't know how many more stats that I can point towards that show that he is not a good defender. Um it's it's a situation where this team should have moved on from him probably two years ago, uh, and they didn't, and they've continued to hold on to him, and I don't know if it's a sunk cost fallacy thing. I don't know if the team has just been like, well, you know what? We held on to him this long. We might as well keep hanging on to him. I don't know if this is a situation where you know management and uh, the front office just they don't want to trade him, or if there's just no trade to be had. I don't know what other GMs value CC at uh, around the league. You might be calling a lot of GMs be like, hey, Cody CC's on the trade block. Do you want to trade for him and you might have all 31 other general managers look at the stats that i provided and be like no not unless you provide us with a first round pick and eat half his salary otherwise we don't want to take that contract which again would be valid especially the more analytically inclined general managers out there the colorados the tampa bays the vegas golden knights that sort of thing so with cody cc it, they've got to move on They've got to move on before the season starts. If he is in this lineup when the season starts, I'm going to be incredibly disappointed. But I am curious what your thoughts are. What do you think about Cody CeCe's time as an Edmonton Oiler? Do you think it is coming to an end? Do you think they should be trying to move him in order to retain Philip Broberg or Dylan Holloway? Make sure you let me know all of your thoughts in the comment section below. As always, if you liked today's video, make sure you hit like. If you really liked it, make sure you hit subscribe. And of course, tell someone that you love them. We're very close to 3,700 subscribers. I'm very excited for the season to start. Let's go Oilers.